just bear with me for one second. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Active Madrasa Spotlight session. I'm Samaya and I lead on the Active Madrasa work stream and uh, I work for Together in Active Future. And as Beth mentioned, Active Madrasas is a collaboration between Active Together in Active Future and Active Lancashire. Together in Active Future is one of the 12 place partners for Sport England. It's all about creating sustainable change in approaches to physical activity and the conditions for this change at a local level within Pennine Lancashire. It's all about encouraging systems change and behaviour change. So at the heart of our model for change, we've got the idea that if people were to change their behaviours, their attitudes and their thoughts around how they, you know, on how they can increase physical activity and tackle inequalities, it would have a positive impact on on the systems and the places that we're living live in making them places for people to strive and thrive and enjoy the places that are, they're, they're living in active madrasas as i mentioned is one of the key networks and work streams for together in the active future i have a few colleagues on the call um, from the active madrasa to, team too um who'll be joining us later on who'll be speaking later on in the uh, webinar as well and sharing their thoughts and their experiences. So I'd like to begin by, you know, explaining what a madrasa is, because a lot of the times when I say madrasa, the public, the people that we work with are quite confused as to what a madrasa is. A madrasa is a place for children to learn about Islam, they learn about the Quran, they learn about the Sunnah. So the Sunnah is anything that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did. And a madrasa is there for purposes of education for the ch for children aged from four or five till they are 18, depending on what they are studying. So they attend madrasa for approximately two hours, two and a half hours. The start can, time can vary from 4.30 or 5.30 till about 7.30 till 8. So if we think about a normal child attending school for six or seven hours of the day, coming home, having a bite to eat, and then rushing off to madrasa for two, two and a half hours, that's a long day. And that limits children to be able to physically become physically active engage in after school clubs and take the time to be more physically active and madrasas are also situated inside mosque buildings but the difference is that a mosque is a place for congregational prayer and it provides support for the public on and provides support and guidance for the public on births, deaths, marriages, divorce, and more recently, alcohol, drugs, and antisocial behaviour. Now, children who attend madrasa attend for various courses. So it depends on how long they spend in madrasa as well. Some drop out at the age of 14 and 15, just before they hit GCSE age. Others carry on till they're 18 and 19. Madrasas and mosques are run by a committee and sometimes they run by just by the principal in itself. When you've got a principal running the madrasa, it's quite a simple process because the principal is the decision maker. But when you actually have a governing body and a governing team, it's quite difficult to get the messages across of what you want to do. So that's just something I wanted to highlight right in the beginning and we'll come to that a bit later on through the webinar as well. During madrasa, the education is generally traditionally presented where children are sat down and they have lower tables or as, as we're moving into modern times, they have tables and chairs as well, but it is quite sedentary. So they are sat down for two, two and a half hours. Now, the purpose for active madrasas was to embed physical activity, sport and play at the heart of madrasa settings. And Initially, to begin that, we had to start off with recruitment. For somebody, we needed somebody who had the experience, understanding and the knowledge of the culture, the sensitivities and the religion, so that we could take that into account and approach madrasas to embed physical activity, sport and play and increase those levels and to identify, you know, how we could help them to progress this further and what the barriers were. So we started off by connecting to madrasas to build trust and see what their motivations were. We started off by calling 50 
40 to 50 madrasas across the whole of Penang. Throughout these phone calls, we identified that madrasas had a similar view where they wanted their children to be more physically active. They wanted them to engage and attain better. They wanted them to not be on the streets, but to be in a safe place. That wasn't just the view of the actual madrasa. It was also the view of the parents. The parents didn't want their children hanging hanging around on the streets or any engaging in any kind of um, <clears throat> antisocial behaviour. Hence, they wanted them in madrasa, whether it was for education or for any other kind of youth-related activity that they would enjoy. So we had a common purpose that we could build on and work on together. But when, as we spoke to the madrasas, we identified and built this trust and found out what they wanted to do. We identified that there were many barriers. So we had a creative engagement session and we co-designed a framework together. In that engagement session, we asked the madrasa principals many questions and it was presented to them in a very creative way. I mean, you, the picture you see on the screen looks quite boring. It looks like there's just men sat on one side, women sat on the other and some screens in the middle. But that was a sensitivity we had to cater for. We understood that they required segregation and it had to be in a place which was comfortable for the madrasa leaders and principals. Um, we also had, we instantly, when we connected to the madrasas, from the 50 madrasas, 12 madrasas came on board straight away. And imminently, we had connected to a madrasa who were the gatekeepers of the local community. And it was the boarding school in Blackburn. When we engaged with them, we found that when they said yes, other madrasas sort of like followed and said yes, because they had they were major influences in the local community, not just in Blackburn, but across Pennine, because a lot of their students that had graduated from there had gone off into Nelson, Burnley, Pendle and set up their own madrasas. So it was like connecting them back to their roots. And the madrasa said we could use their space at no cost. And that was comfortable for the madrasa principals and teachers to attend. Now, why we chose to go to the boarding school and take them up on the offer was because initially when I rang the madrasas and said, oh, we're going to have um, a core design session, we're going to have a workshop where we want to see what your ideas are and how we can put them together and core design a framework. Um, I said, would you be able to come to the local community centre? And they said, um, no, I won't be able to make it. And there was various excuses and I didn't know what, they, what the barriers were. But as soon as I said, can you come to the boarding school? They were happy. It was because it was a safe place for them. They, they possibly knew that their needs were going to be met. They had asked me about segregation and they had a place to pray if it was going to become prayer time during the workshop. So together in this engaging workshop, we asked them questions about target control. How much autonomy and influence did they have? on changing the policies and practices in Madrasa. Just asking them that question enabled them to reflect on their practices. And they actually said, well, actually, I can make this change in Madrasa. I can give my children a 15 minute break, or I can include this activity into my lessons, which was quite interesting, because prior to that, they always thought that they had to have the permission of the principal or the governing team. So the benefit of that activity was for them to identify how much control they had over influencing de decisions and changing the system and the behavior in their own madrasa setting. Secondly, we asked them what the barriers were and the barriers were many, which I'm gonna to come to. But <clears throat> additionally, we asked them what they had access to and what they didn't have access to. So a lot of it was a lack of knowledge or a lack of understanding what was available to them in the local com communities due to communication issues. For some, it was a bar language barrier. For others, it was just, just they didn't know what was available because they hadn't built those relationships with external organisations, providers and communities. Uh, another thing I have on the screen is time flexibility. We had to understand that madrasa teachers work nine to five to earn an income and generally between the hours of five, of five to seven, they volunteer their time to teach madrasa. So that meant that they didn't have, if I was to hold a workshop on a Tuesday afternoon or a Wednesday afternoon, that would be good for me because I only work nine to five or eight till six or whatever the working hours are. But for madrasa principals and teachers, it doesn't really work because they wouldn't be able to attend because they have their work commitments. They're going to come home and then go to madrasa. So we had to be quite flexible and we had to meet madrasa principals, teachers and organisations. We had to meet them at their level and cater for their needs. 
So most of our workshops take place on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning between the hours of 10 to 12. And we make it as engaging and as fun for them as we can. And at the same time, we come together to co-design our sessions and to take upon new physical activity offers and build something new into the work stream that we already have. At the workshop, we provided each madrasa with a kit bag and an archery board. Um, a kit bag contained like soft balls, table tennis equipment, some cones and a few football nets. Additionally, the archery boards. Um, the reason why we provided archery boards because um, in the first slide, I sort of like mentioned that when children go to madrasa, um, they learn about the Quran and they learn about the Sunnah. So the Sunnah is something that the Prophet did in his lifetime and he encouraged that. So there's five sports that he actually encouraged. And they are, if you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have archery, horse riding, running, wrestling and swimming. So these are the five sports <clears throat> that he actually um, encouraged. And we thought if we start off with one of those sports, we are engaging to them and engaging with them and to their religion, which is quite important. And it went it went down the tree because at that time uh, it was just by chance we came across Archery GB who were presenting um, uh, their project called Project Trumaya, where they were trying to increase um, the uptake of Muslim communities in archery. So hence we started off with the archery and we connected them to Arch Archery GB instantly. Moving on, uh, we um, used the double diamond approach where we knew there was an issue where we wanted to increase physical activity and tackle health inequalities. So this is so the double diamond approach is where we went to the madrasa, discussed with them, came away with rich information, designed something up and shared it back with them. And we created the active madrasa framework. The active madrasa framework has many elements to it. When you look at it, it looks quite simple and it looks as though it's quite obvious. But when we got into long lengthy discussions and conversations with madrasas, we identified that what looks simple is actually quite a significant barrier. So I'm gonna begin with skills development. At this stage, they told us that we want to embed, you know, football or we want to do cricket or we want to do archery, but we actually don't have the skills to be able to do that. And we don't have the skills to be able to deliver that. How can you help us? So at this point, um, it was a good idea to connect the madrasas to national governing bodies and provide them with taster sessions within the workshops so they could try out the activity and see if it worked for their place and their madrasas. So it was designed by them for them. So designed by the people for the people. Uh, our, in our attempt to increase capacity and skills, skills as we connected the madrasas to various national governing bodies, the principals and teachers trained up as instructors for various sports, such as Archery GB trained up 26 archery instructors who were delivering to a mega number of children. British Wrestling have um, upskilled 19 uh, wrestling instructors. Uh, Soccer, uh, Lancashire Football Association have been working with our madrasas um, to upskill the madrasa teachers to be able to deliver soccer sites. Um, we've got the English Cricket Board working closely with our madrasas to embed cricket into madrasa settings. Another barrier we came across was the finances. They said madrasa is fee paying where children pay a fee to go to madrasa. So we are hesitant to ask parents for any more money to be able to take their children out for an activity or take them out for a trip. And we don't have all of the equipment because it implies a cost and we won't be able to afford that. The fees that we get actually pay for the maintenance of the building and for the bills, bills that are required to run the building. I think we might have just lost Samaya there, actually. Um, 
just see if I can get it back in. Just bear with me a second. If not, Mark, you're up on this one. I'm wondering if a signal went or battery or something. I'm not too sure. Um, let me just try and get her back in. Mark, do you know, um, have you got a sight of the presentation at all? Uh, I don't have sight of the presentation, but I can I, I can um, fill a gap somehow if you want me to. No problem whatsoever. I think she was on to the finances as the barriers, wasn't she, in terms of... Um... Yeah. Uh, apologies. Um, oh. Oh, hey. Uh, apologies, uh, I don't know. I, it's never happened before. But instead of me getting the temperature, the computer got a temp temperature and it went off. He sort of like said the computer's gone too hot and he just switched off. That's never happened before. I'm so sorry about that. We we're just, we're about, just about, about to fill it in it. there, so no, it's fine. Uh, good that you're back in and well done for, for getting the computer back on to working. So it's fine. We're always... Um given technical issues and things. So um, I think you're up to where about the finances of the barriers. Absolutely. I'll just Great. show the screen again. Thank you. That <laughs> Adam said it's because you were on fire with the presentation. That's what it is. Absolutely. Can you all see the screen? Yeah, we've got that. Thanks, Amaya. Uh, yeah, so um, <clears throat> uh, coming on to the framework again, uh, so I was up to the finances. So at this point, um, madrasas didn't want to charge uh, their children for, um, a, a, you know, any extra activities because they felt like, um, uh, you know, we can't ask parents for any more money because of the cost of the rise in the cost of uh, living and so on. So we sort of like said, well, you can apply for funding. And at this point, they were like, but we can't really apply for funding because it's lottery funding. And lottery, religiously, we're not allowed to accept any kind of lottery funding. So this was a major barrier. So we had to sit down and have a conversation with Sport England. And from that, we found out that, you know, there is an option for organisations that and people that can't take or accept the lottery um, funding. There is alternative ways. So 12 madrasas were given the opportunity to be able to apply for funding. And from that, we had some really significant impacts. 12, from the 12 madrasas, 11 madrasas received the funding. One of the madrasas took their children, they had the opportunity to take part in um, self-defence classes and over 100 children participated in that. 500 plus children attended canoeing sessions and um, other madrasas put themselves down for skills development, training and equipment that they could use. So it was a very sustainable approach because they had the skills on site and they had the equipment on site. Um, governance is a big issue in madrasas because you have, like I said, sometimes the madrasa is run just by the principal and him and his wife and other few, just a few members, a small group of people. And it's very easy to, you know, put something into place and change the behavior or change the system. But we with some madrasas where they have larger um, governance teams or governing bodies and they're of um, older age, they come across barriers where they feel like the madrasa isn't a place to be physically active. But it's a place where children should come and study and then just leave and go home but as we be as you know the world has been developing and children have access to a lot of ai social media a lot of the parents have understood that they want their children removed from those and they want to spend their time in a safe setting where they're going to be happy but at the same time they're going to be learning as well so 
speaking to the decision makers and getting that messaging across is a bit of a task, but it can be done. They also st- struggled with simple things like risk assessments, health and safety, safeguarding, insurance. But as we've worked with NGBs, we have found that we can support them in those elements. And we have got a lot of things off the ground in all of those areas. Now, we're thinking about the stakeholders, such as the parents, the children, the young people and the volunteers. Um, we had to get them on board as well because children have been kept at home for two years during COVID. And some children have grown up during that period of time and they come across like um, insecurities such as body image or how they're feeling about partaking in activities or feeling like I'm not good enough. So it's all about talking about all of those issues and, you know, getting rid of those ideas and helping them overcome those barriers so that they can participate actively in physical activity, sport and play. Additionally, it's about building confidence. So when you speak to children and young people, you'll find some of them are just not aren't just confident enough to engage in physical activity. But if the madrasa teachers are taking part in some form of sport and physical activity, it's having a positive impact on the children. Because we found throughout this whole piece of work that the madrasa principals are thinking about their own health and well-being as well. And they're taking part in activities and the volunteers are taking part in activities, which is having a positive impact on the children. Now, the purpose for acting madrasas, as I mentioned, was to embed sports, physical activity and play and movement at the heart of the madrasa settings. But it wasn't just limited to the children and young people. Our ambition was over ambitious, but something has to be over ambitious to meet the goal anyway. So we wanted the children to be active, but we wanted them to take that home to their moms and dads. And we wanted the moms and dads to come out and become more social, engage in walk, engage in spending time with their children, walk into madrasa or, you know, actively partaking in volunteering and taking an active part in those activities that the madrasa is providing or having a community garden where they can do some planting and grow their own produce the benefits of that would be teaching the children life skills you know them having their own community garden to be able to come and pick their own fruit their vegetables and you know share that and reduce the living costs or the costs of buying groceries anyway it's just general life skills um uh, when the elderly uh, people come to pray at the mosque for congregational prayer, um, allowing having space outside the madrasa or the mosque where they can have a walk and have a chit chat outside as opposed to inside and have that spend time with other members being more social or um, just being a bit more physically active as opposed to being sedentary and sat down inside. I'm not saying that um, the madrasa community is un- not social. They are very social, but just like encouraging increasing time away from virtual reality from the mobile phones from screens and you know communicating more with other people as that has a positive impact on our mental health as well community connections um is all about building strong relationships with the people that we're working with so our national governing bodies um that we are working with are archery gb uh british um, wrestling association the pony club uh, British uh, Equestrian Federation, Lancashire Football Association, the English Cricket Board and British Paddle Sports. Move and Learn, which I'm going to come on to in a few minutes as well. And, you know, it's about allowing the madrasas to know that if they build strong relationships with the national governing bodies, um, even if active madrasas isn't there and they don't have our support, they have the skills and they have the equipment on site where they can then deliver to their children and young people, deliver the various activities to their children and young people. And it's a sustainable approach because it comes at no cost. Um, we've increased um, physical activity. We've achieved a common purpose that we all agreed upon right at the beginning. And it's designed by the people for them in the spaces they have. So not every sport works for everybody. Some madrasas went with archery. Some madrasas went with football. Others went with cricket, depending on how much indoor and outdoor space they have and what the interest is from consultation with their children, young people and their volunteers. Now, I'm going to give you an example of um, archery GB. So Archery GB um, upskilled 26 instructors to become, uh, 26 uh, volunteers to become Archery instructors. Active Lancashire provided um, these organisations with the real equipment or even uh, the soft play equipment. They deliver to about 5,000 children per week. Um, That's a significant, significant impact. Um, we also are working with um, 
<clears throat> boxing where we've upscaled about nine tutors to deliver boxing as well. Uh, now, moving on to active learning. Uh, active learning is uh, another element of the Active Madrasa work stream, which is where whilst children are learning, we want them to be active as well. So in the two hours, we want them to be active. Um, with the other activities, sometimes it's before madrasa time or after madrasa time. But the impact Active Madrasa has had is where madrasa principals have changed their behaviours and implemented a 15 minute break for madrasas for the children to go outside and play for 15 minutes or to use the kit bag that they were provided with. Now, to go with the kit bag, we actually created some resources that you can see on your screen. And those resources were a set of cards um, which matched the equipment that was inside the bag. And we left it with the madrasas as a, uh, as a commitment to do to use the equipment bag as they wished or let them let their children use the imagination on how they want to use it and how they could potentially use these cards in their classroom whilst they were learning. So in, in September when madrasas, <clears throat> uh, last year when madrasas received the um, cards, um, they sort of like said, I'm planning for my new year and this is the activities that we're going to be doing. I'm going to write the questions on the ball and I'm going to throw the ball around the classroom. This is the activity we're going to be using in the second week and so on. And we connected with an organisation called Move and Learn uh, who provide active learning resources for schools. But as we've worked with them, we've developed our resources further to embed them into the madrasa settings. And they've trained us up to become trainers to deliver active learning within madrasas. Um, we've delivered to two madrasas and the impacts have been quite significant. Um, the teachers have really enjoyed the training and the reviews we'd have, we've had is that it's actually made a change for them within their lifestyle before it's even made a change for the children. So that's a really positive impact. One of the teachers after the training sort of said, I've gone home from the training and I've got my kids to be my own kids at home to be active. And tomorrow I'm going to practice this activity in my class because I never realised that I could use it with all, all the children or I could use it with the Islamic curriculum that we're de delivering in mosque. I never realised that you did not need a lot of equipment to be able to have an active lesson. We just thought it was for all the children so you had to be really serious and they had to be sat down and listening as they do in school. Um, but as the changes are coming into school settings, similarly these changes are filtering into the madrasa settings as well, where madrasa teachers are realising that it's not a difficult, very difficult task to get the children to move during session times as well, and they don't really need a lot of equipment. So that's a very positive element um, that we've had. Access to the uh, cards is on our website, on Together and Active Futures website. The framework is present also on the website. Um, now I'd like to introduce you to one of my colleagues, um, Mark, um, who is um, a great asset and, you know, a key person to the development of this work stream. So welcome, Mark. Hi, Samaya, you all right? I'm fine, thank you. You're all good. Um, I have a few questions for you. I don't believe so, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, um, the first <clears throat> question is, how did you feel on your first visit to the madrasa? Uh, is it? Yeah, it was an interesting one. Obviously, um, with the madrasa work that, that you know we 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 engaged with yourself, Samaya, didn't we? Recruited yourself and uh, and a couple of other people to to help um, almost um, design this from scratch, didn't we? Really, um, I think the first there was a couple of things probably from first madrasa that we sort of physically went to to see. I think one the one element is we're going in trying to sort of um, have a discussion about something that we hadn't created yet, which was quite um, quite a difficult thing to do um, and quite a nervy nervy thing to do. But I think even prior to that, I think again, first time I'd ever been to a, a in, into a madrasa, um, and I did feel quite uh, a little bit nervous before going in I don't I think I even waited at the gates for you to arrive I didn't want to go in there on my own just because of the unknown I guess um and obviously when we went in um the protocols of taking your shoes off and um you know that was that was a, a new experience and the biggest worry there was 
Um, have I got socks on that don't have big holes and my toe sticking out of them? Um, and something again, the, the other experience again, just not being aware, you know, you, know, you almost come up with these assumptions, or there's a, there's there's an, an etiquette, or there's um, protocols, you know, because there's male and female together, and just the unknown around that. Um, and the other element was obviously we were, we were meeting the principal, you know, he, he was a very well educated, very well regarded man within the community and you know you wanted to make sure you made a good impression and and knew what you were talking about which we, we didn't feel very confident about because we hadn't designed what we were talking about really <laughs> um but it, all that soon melted away because it you know once once you get in once you took your shoe it was just just a, a a meeting of a really influential nice person and, and and was really keen to understand what we wanted to do so um, you know, it, it soon turned into just a, a normal experience other than taking my shoes off, I guess. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. Um, the second question what I have for you is, what was your perspective at the initial stages of acting madrasas? Um, I, th I think it goes back to, yeah, probably what, what I've just said in a way as well, where... Um, <sighs> Active Madrasa, it was it was a blank canvas, you know, and and I work, you know, I've worked for an active partnership for a long, long, long time, and um, you know, you, you, you know, working on Sport England projects and things, you, you get used to or you you get almost programmed to deliver or do things in a certain way, you know, you get a specified project with specified outcomes, specified budget, and an expectation of how to deliver it. And we're almost pre-programmed to do that and to the point where you're almost doing that in your sleep through through work, really. Um, and this was different because we didn't have anything. It was just this idea of we'd love to understand more and work alongside more people from, from the community of Penn and Lancashire and, and design something up together. So I think it was a bit of... Um, my, my perspective was more around, Christ, I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> um <laughs> We don't know what we're doing and there's probably a little bit of, of, of fear around um because you don't have these you know these project designed sort of outcomes and things um there, there was a this fear that you you know you'd try to move away from that sort of approach into this new approach of discovery and things but Every now and again, you almost feel like you, you're creeping back into how you would normally do things, you know, coming up with, the, you know, this is a solution, do some delivery, do this. And a lot of it was about just being strong and almost sort of like um, keeping that away from your mindset, I guess. Um, so that was interesting from us to do. And I think the other thing as well, because we tend to be surrounded by projects that I delivered that way and there's nothing wrong with that you know that's how some projects are delivering get and get really good outcomes but we were kind of surrounded by projects that had defined outputs and outcomes and you hear them showcasing how brilliant and how, how many numbers they've got and these great stories and we were kind of sat there almost thinking cracky do, do people think we're not doing anything because we don't have anything like that to show yet so I think a lot of it was around just being patient and, and brave around not um not not being too worried about not being able to show the impact yet. The impact will come, and we potentially have to show impact in a different way through you know, highlighting the relationships that we've built, highlighting the discussions we've had and the connections we've made, which are different outcomes, but as equally as important, I guess. And um, just on that, you said it was a blank canvas. So how do you feel about painting the picture so far? It's gone well? Well, yeah yeah um and i think again as a as a it's not it's not a project or anything. it's just you know we, acting madrasas is just a, a community owned piece of work where we're just connecting the dots i guess and and just you know working on a common purpose together which is we want more young people just to have have fun and be happy and develop into great human beings so absolutely um yeah it's, it, it's it's going really well i mean you know there, there's things that we learn along the way that don't 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 work and that's part and parcel of this type of work really but mm -hmm. um i think what's been really good is a lot of part you know a lot of our work you know as an active partnership a lot of our work is around partnership working and, and the amount of people who have come on board and and 
thought differently themselves. You know, you know, working with national governing bodies, who, you know, in in the past have had very direct outcomes to hit themselves, and for them to come almost joining us with this blank canvas and going back to their uh, national governing body leads and saying we need to do things differently and agreeing to do things differently. I think that's been really good. And the impact speaks for itself. I think in terms of, you know, the engagement we get on a, on a Saturday morning, morning, you know, we're getting 40, 50 madrasas coming along in their own time to learn, understand, be part of it with each other, seeing things that they could implement in the own madrasa and then following that up saying they want to get involved and do additional skills, additional training. So I think it's going really well, to be fair. Yeah, not to, to sort of blow our own trumpet, I guess. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, can you give me three things that have been uh, surprising or are the highlights of this work stream? Uh, I, I think I have to mention some of the highlights then, I think, in terms of yeah. in terms of some of the part, you know, national governing bodies, partners, other organisations come in and being part of something and changing how they would, would do things. I think that's been a really... A surprise and a highlight. Um, I think one of the other other big thing, a big surprise was uh, is um, you know your assumptions when we started on this would probably mean be that you know this would this would be more around around you know boys being active and 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 the opportunities for for boys. But actually, our, our biggest impact is females. You know, there's there's real excitement, real engagement, and almost a, a giddiness when we when we develop you know developing these opportunities from the females that we work with who are engaging young young females to be taking part in sport and physical activity um i mean we had we had that celebration event at the end of well the beginning of july didn't we where i probably said that the females outnumbered the males three or four to one um just in coming along to celebrate which which was again nothing i'd have expected really so that was a big big surprise um and the other highlight as well, we, we, we've obviously, obviously recruited more people to be part of this, you know, um, using their skills and expertise. And the highlight is just working with them. I think we've got Uba on, on the call, Sarah, Aisha, um, Isra. It was just all bringing in and lead, you know, and Omar and Ronan as well. And we're all doing this stuff together. And it's not one organisation. It's not owned by anybody. It's just a great piece of collaborative work where everyone's bringing their strengths their skills you know what they've got to offer and it's just a great thing to be part of i guess brilliant that's brilliant thank you thank you very much mark now um i'd like to call upon obay and um listen to a review from the clitheroe mosque so obay and sarah husband and wife they recruited by together and active future um working on our strategic element of the active madrasa work stream and um, on the female leadership element as well. But they were participants um, to begin with, and they spent a whole year um, right from the beginning embedding physical activity, sport and play in their own madrasa setting in Clidero. So, Obai, if you would like to take the floor and tell us a bit about what you're doing and what the impacts have been at, in Clidero. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Um, so I'm the imam at Clidero Moss, and as I mentioned, we uh, work with Active Madrasa as well. And we found out about Active Madrasa near its beginning um, through uh, one of our colleagues that we were in touch with from Blackburn, who thought it was a great idea for our mosque. So to give you a little bit of perspective, I'll change my camera angle if I can um, to show you. Um, can have a, yeah. So this is how our mosque is at the moment. This is the space that we have. And we're considered a slightly smaller um, madrasa um, than um, other of the big mosques. So where other mosques have 300 um, students um, or 200 students, 100 students, we a little bit smaller. We have uh, 25 students. So and because our community is a little bit smaller and oh, we only have two teachers, myself and my wife. So we thought we need to try and make the um, madrasa time more active. And I'm not sure if Sumaya touched on this, but as you can imagine that after a whole day's worth of school, um, it'll be very, very difficult for um, students to then come to the mosque and then spend a further two hours sitting down and basically being lectured to that, you know, this is your um, lesson for today. This is what you have to go through and you must learn and you have to put your head down. So we had an idea that we should try and make it after. So our activities were limited to mainly off-site 
um, activities. So we used to do football on a Sunday, um, take the kids out here and there, um, but not to nothing within the actual educational um, curriculum. And there, when we found um, or when we got in touch with Active Madrasa and we did the active learning, we realized that we're actually able to um, make learning fun and also make it in a way that the children are not being put to boredom or put to sleep. And the way we were able to do it was that um, we attended the, um, I believe it was the first celebration of Active Madrasa, and we got an introduction to it and we thought, wow, this is quite in line with our thoughts. And to give you a pleasure, we're a little bit younger than, so with, than the elder generation. So of, of the newer generation of teachers, of course, they're younger. They, they also like to get involved. They like to play football. They like to do activities and go out. So we thought that we should try and bring this to the mosque. And we're very fortunate that we were given uh, some kit as well. Like Active Madrasa it helps. And it um, not only trains the staff teachers up with the um, skills to deliver or um, activities within the madrasa setting, but we also get a little bit of kit, soft kit that will be, um, you know, so we don't have the moss management or the building people coming and saying, oh, you're breaking windows and this and that, so, you know, which would be another headache for us, but rather it's a soft touch. So I, what I could do is I can show you how we set up um, in uh, madrasa. So this would be the classroom we have. So we've made one classroom here. Um, if I can just change my angle. So as we enter the classroom, we've set up a little toys room. So we had this crash before um, where we had toys that were just random. You know, people would um, bring um, toys out from home and just shove it in a box like this. So this is what um, it used to be. And what we then we tried developing it to make it a little bit more educational as well as a lot more active. So we got given um, this amazing set of um, table tennis that is very, very easy to put up. You can just uh, clip and un unclip it from here. And we've got, you know, we give um, a little bit of time where they can, within the madrasa curriculum, within the time, they can either play football, which is obviously the most popular. We've tried getting them into archery, which the girls have really got into. We've tried getting them into table tennis, but I think the clear winner is football as always. Um, so this is the setting that we've adopted in our uh, madrasa. And the, the idea was with active madrasa was that whilst we play, whilst we, they also come um, to learn, it's important that we try and give them a little bit of um, something to look forward to. So it's not that they just sat there and, you know, they have nothing to go for and they're demotivated. Rather, we give them a little motivation where they come in and we made, a, I forgot the terms, Maya, was it a, a commitment card? That right yes. in the beginning we committed to try in and embed around 10 to 15 minutes per session. So we have two one-hour sessions. So we try to Im embed 10 to 15 minutes within that near the end as a reward. Um, of course, <laughs> the room doesn't look like that all the time. I just had a, had them clean up yesterday or the day before. Um, but, you know, usually there's toys everywhere and everything. So the point was that after every 10, the last 10 minutes or so, or even in between sometimes, we give them that thing to look after, uh, look forward to that they're able to go and enjoy themselves after their lesson and this has worked um i mentioned um to some other some of my colleagues before and i think at the celebration that this has impacted even some of the most difficult of students that in school and even through previous previous teachers in the mosque they would say that um uh, my current is it um, adhd they have or they have this or you know they're, they're not you know they're just not listening or they just don't want to learn they just sit there um so what that's given them is that it's given these students a real push where even though they may have some sort of disabilities um according to the school or whatever like for example dyslexia or reading so we've had a student that was stuttering um and just literally refusing to learn um because not because maybe because he found it too hard or maybe because it was that um you know he felt embarrassed so what we've done is that we've used the room as a motivation for them and where he was stuttering and embarrassed he became a little bit more confident and i think we've been here about 
So just well, he's been with myself, say about just about a year, twelve months, and the impact he has is that he's been able to finish. Um, for those of uh, who are in. Um, the madrasa setting they've been he's been able to finish a whole uh, good 30 pages worth of reading um, which for a student like that is a great achievement and that's all because of what we're able to um, give them through motivation um, and also the students themselves um, see that okay you know mosque it doesn't have to be boring it's not that we're coming and it's like a burden upon us rather we can be more active and that's just one example for the girls itself as mark mentioned um, they've taken to it like <laughs> I, I couldn't believe as well that they have really really put forward that they actually come to myself and say uh please can you open the um toys room for us you know we we, we were pushing really hard that for example when it's ex uh, near exam times that we've revised really really hard we've done through all our revision that we were set can we go and then of course we give it to them we let them um, enjoy themselves and that's the impact that uh, active madrasa has had within um, our own setting here, where we're very fortunate that we're able to give them a dedicated room. And we've also had um, a visitor that's come um, to promote the Pony Club, um, uh, which was a great experience for the kids. We did that within the madrasa time as a reward, as a treat for them after the exams. And it's really made a good impact on them that when they've come back this year, um, they're looking forward to their lessons. And it's been a little bit more easier to control um, as we know children we're not always able to fully be able to get them to concentrate fully for you know an hour but it's made it a, that much easier where they're now able to focus a little bit more and that's the experience that we've had um, and we've been very fortunate and of course we thank Mark and Sumaya for this great idea that we're able to assist them on this uh, journey. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Imam Obey. I really appreciate that. So um, there was a few things Imam Obey said and they've just got me thinking and I think it's quite important to mention when uh, we say that children uh, go to school on madrasa and we need to allow them to have that fun and enjoy themselves in mosque as well. We understand, according to our religious teachings, um, health comes before sickness and we are told to prioritise five things before five. And one of those is health before um, sick, sickness, time before becoming busy. And there's a few others to go with that. And additionally, I just wanted to add um, for, 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 for many Muslim families, um, when children attend school and madrasa, we as parents, we don't intend to pressurise them or burden them with study, 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 study. But in a sense, and we sort of like have to because of the environment that we live in with um, the environmental factors that influence our decisions as parents for our children we want them to be we want them to study and be successful and have those opportunities that maybe we didn't have as children and young people because our parents came from migrant communities they came from they were migrants they came from different countries they had a culture shock when they settled here and um they gave us the best of what they could. But for us, we, we came across many barriers such as, uh, you know, Islamophobia or 9-11. That changed the world for many young people. I was a little child at that point. It turned my world around. And similarly, as events happen across the world and in this country, it has an impact. And we, 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 we feel as though we have less chances of being successful. Hence, we tell our children, you have to study so hard and get those grades so you can get into the college you want to go to or into the university you want to go to. And it's going to be those straight A's because you're going to come across a competition which is going to be very tough. And the reality is life gives you one chance and you've got to, it's a very cruel world out there. You've got to get it right the first time because that second chance may not come to you. And, you know, it's like, that's why we, we're always telling them, you have to study hard, you have to study hard. And then health and well health it just becomes a sideline and physical activity becomes a luxury so it's just something um to think about now moving on um i just wanted to share uh, our impacts and how we've had an impact on behavior change and system change and how we've empowered leaders um to make those changes in their madrasa settings and it, it is quite powerful to be quite honest and we've displayed it as a board because we've got our team on board the active madrasa team um we, we, there's about nine of us right now so um we've got the active madrasa team and then we've got the national governing bodies that we're working with but the impacts that have come from that is 100 and young 100 children young children and young people have participated in self defense we have 19 level 1 wrestling coaches 500 plus children went canoeing 26 archery uh, instructors are delivering to 
1,080 children and young people, and that number has increased significantly because we don't just have children and young people. We've got adult females, adult males. We've got the elderly participating in archery um, across Pennine, Lancashire. We've got 28 madrasas making better choices and changing practices for over 5,040 children. And since we've created this visual, that number has increased. I think we're looking at about 8,000 right now because many more madrasas have had active learning training and many more madrasas have decided to increase um, their play times or increase a 15 minute break and identify that health is a very important factor. Um, we've had 12 madrasas apply for funding. Um, additionally, um, we've learned the, the learning has been threefold for us. So we have been learning from the madrasas that we're working with that these are the sensitivities. This is how we need to work around them and help how we ha uh, and understand them. They've been learning on how to work with us and build strong relationship with the national governing bodies and the organisations around them but additionally the national governing bodies have been learning as well that you know um me telling a madrasa that they have to sign up to my club and they have to be registered in this kind of way and you know they have to invest this much money before they can take the next step that has sort of like changed from that for some national governing bodies because they're having those internal conversations on how they can make them approach more simple because once you go to a madrasa let's forget about a madrasa if, if you came to me and i wasn't from a madrasa but you said Simaya, I want you to do this, but you've got to fill out five forms before you begin. I mean, that's an inhibitor there and then. So he's thinking about approaches where we make things simple for people to engage and become more successful um, in, in life and allowing children and young people to just be children and young people and have fun and to make those correct choices from a younger age. Um, so the key learning from today's session was um, building strong relationships learning together, reflecting of what's gone well, what could have been done better and how we can change that and adapting it to work with the community that we're working with to meet their needs and understand them. Having the essence of time to ask those questions and understand that maybe this wasn't the right approach and I could sh change it and make it better. Having the time to have those conversations because one conversation can have several intended and unintended impacts. So for example, um, talking to you, Archery GB led me to um, uh, swimming, to having a conversation with Swim England. That had an impact, that had a ripple where he introduced me to um, the Pony Club. The Pony Club introduced me to somebody else. So some of those were unintended impacts that we had. The ripples that came from that were some were intentional and some were unintentional. Co production and using the local community assets, allowing the community to design an approach that suits them and designing it for themselves. It's not about me or anybody else saying, oh, you need to do this and you need to do it in such a way. Let people choose their pathways and make it successful for themselves and trust. So initially when we went to madrasas, the madrasas did ask us, are you from the council? Um, what's the hidden agenda? Why is this much energy going into madrasas? But we had answers for all of that because the same amount of energy is going into schools. We don't have any hidden agenda. We just want to tackle health inequalities, um, have happier, healthier people with good physical and mental health. And, you know, teamwork is dream work. None of this would have been possible uh, if we worked in silos. It was all about for us as well, working with different organizations, building those relationships up, but within our teams, becoming the biggest fans of each other and allowing our own TAF team, the core team, the coordination team, the comms team, the creative engagement team, the leadership team to support us in what we're doing. Nothing, we can go far on our own, but we can go further if we all work together. And I think that's what's happened I don't think I know that's what's happened with active madrasas. It's been a collective effort, not just from the active madrasa team, but for the wider team that we have in Together and Active Future. It wouldn't have been possible without any any of us. Now, if you have what we have coming up next is we have more of the active learning training. We're going to progress with our boxing and our wrestling as well. Um, hopefully we're going to be focusing on um, nutrition and we are designing a female lead leadership program. Um, for the madrasa teachers and volunteers and uh, um, thank you very much for attending today's session I hope it has been of benefit and I hope you've taken away a lot of learning um, please feel free to post any questions in the chat and um, you do have uh, my email and you do have the website so please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or if you would like any support or guidance on what we're doing thank you very much
Um, I feel like we could all do a round of applause we would do thank you (laughs) thank you so much Samaya that's fantastic you did ask for questions and we do have a couple in the chat if that's okay yeah you're getting round of applause (laughs) virtually Um, so we did touch on it actually around the um, engagement with girls that you talked about but Adam Fuller's just asking is there a difference with boys and girl engagements in the setting and does this come from the kind of the culture of the madrasa or the children themselves and I guess how did you um what do you think made a greater kind of female engagement really from from what you talked about um okay so Samaya do you want me to answer the one little bit of that because I think there'll be a number of things but I know I know you won't say it otherwise um um one of the answers is probably Samaya herself um I think um again when we mentioned it's all about relationships and trust and and and, and things like that as them enablers to get things started i think um what what i did notice is samaya when she were reaching out to those madrasas when she were talking to females there were almost a connection there because samaya will pick up the phone and she'll she'll recognize them and say, oh i studied with you at such a place or i did this with you or, i know such a body and i think a lot of it was around the, the one of the reasons of a really strong female engagement is samaya and the great work that she's been doing and, and the relationship she's got and built up, up straight away as well. So I'll get that one out of the way, somewhere because I know you wouldn't have mentioned it. Yeah, and I think it was just because, um, you know, they wanted to become more healthy and physically active too as well. So motivation from them. Uh, brilliant. And do we have any other? Sorry, I was just trying to quickly scroll. Is there a difference? Yeah, so... Um, it- it, well, it, we've said about that sort of things. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Adam. Um, if not, pop it in the chat. Um, we had another question from Mo Sadat. Um, how did you break down the barriers in a very male-dominated management environment? Uh, very interesting question, Mo. Um, very interesting question. So um, uh, it was just, well, we did when we did ring up a few of the madrasas, they did refuse to speak to myself. But what's happened is once we've connected with a few madrasas who were okay speaking to a female um it's had a ripple effect so they've introduced the idea of active madrasas to another madrasa then they've introduced it to another madrasa so breaking down the barriers became simple because it wasn't about them communicating with me it was about them seeing real impacts and real real training happening because the 12 madrasas we engaged with they were okay with speaking to myself and when they actually said we were very protective over this piece of work, we didn't want to share it with anybody till we actually saw some results. Once they started seeing the results, they sort of like sharing it with others. Now, then some of those others are the people who did not actually want to engage with myself being a female. But as soon as they saw the impacts, the results and the benefits, they started break that it broke down that barrier and we just got the engagement from them there is a few um on the i created a whatsapp group so they don't need to create talk to speak to me directly they can send me a message instead um i created a community group where i put on all the announcement for active madrasas and i've added the ngbs to those groups as well so if they have any offers or any training coming up they can put a poll on or put their messages on there as well and he sort of like broke down barriers. But sometimes when I do go to a madras and there's a principal um, who doesn't want to speak to a female or there is a barrier there, he will have somebody else available or his wife will attend with him or something like that. Thank you for that, Samaya. I applaud you for that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, another question. How can we be part of the project? How can we? Is, uh, is one of the questions. And also, are you looking at scaling this up outside of Lancashire? So kind of the two. So what can people do as an interest to be part of the project now if they are in Pennine, Lancashire, um, or indeed Lancashire? And then also, how are we looking at scaling this up, which might maybe over to Mark for that one. Well, I think I think just in terms of how can you get involved, I think um, it could... Khadija, because I know it's followed up. It's, it looks like we might have missed some communication from you, Khadija, so apologies about that. But we'll have your details. We'll, we'll get in touch with you after this. This is open to anybody and everyone. Um, we are focused across Pennine, Lancashire and Preston as, as a focus for our work as a, as a place partner and, and active links. But there's nothing to stop anyone wider being involved as well. Um, we'd, we'd love to welcome other people to be part of this as well. But um, Khadija, we... 
we will touch base. We have done some work in just, you know, some time in Greater Manchester, haven't we, Samaya, around some of the active learning and things like that. Absolutely. Um, but let's have a follow-up with you, Khadija. We'll, we'll follow that up with you personally. Uh, yeah, and um, there is a question, I think, from Adam Fuller. Um, so um, about this becoming... Uh, it, um, so uh, you mentioned about is there national curriculum or even teacher training etc to influence the teachers so that is possible through the active learning uh, we can provide um, the teacher training outside of Pennine Lancashire and um, I, I think know. Adam's happy to come in here I think Do you want to come in Adam yeah, it was just around, obviously, when we're talking about CAS with schools, we're talking about influencing, like, initial teacher training and actually those teachers that are getting trained up and influencing at that level when they're coming in. Um, I just wondered, obviously, with all madrasas set up differently and delivering in communities and things, is there, like, a training thing that the volunteer teachers have to do or and again excuse my ignorance and my lack of knowledge around it but it was just a, a, a bit of a national is there is there any way in which we can influence and share this great work at that at that sort of training level I, I didn't know so there's two questions there you're asking about madrasa teachers if they get any national training before they start teaching in madrasa is that correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so what happens is once uh, madrasa teachers graduate um and um they it depends which madrasa they graduate from but they do have um some training that to have they have to go through like the safeguarding you know child protection the basic governance and then they get trained up on how to teach the actual lessons but then um, once they join their madrasa, their madrasa will have an induction period of where they'll be uh, just supporting an experienced teacher first and then gradually um, they'll get their own class and then they'll start teaching as well. But it depends if they're volunteering or if it's paid work. Generally with the volunteering, there is training, but there is, sometimes there's less low retention and quick turnaround. Although at other times it's very, you know, some of the madrasas have had their teachers for years so um there is uh, with the, we can tie this into the cas framework as well where we can exchange what we are learning and share the madrasa perspective as well and with to, that oh, sorry 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 just to follow that very quickly adam i, I don't need you if you were but we we we've probably heavily inspired by the cas framework work happening in mm. yorkshire um that helped us set us on our way in terms of how we were going to make a start on this as well so We've we've kind of incorporated elements of the CAS approach along the way. Does that answer your question, Adam? Yeah, cheers, guys. That's that's great. I can see some good link ups and stuff like that. It's something that we're definitely exploring um, across across the Pennines. So yeah, that's that's grand. Thank you. And um, Zuleika, there was a question from yourself about how we can um, scale up at a national level, engaging madrasas beyond Lancashire. So I think that process has already started in the in 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 terms of where we've had a, a lot of interest from Bolton and Greater Manchester, and they've been asking us of how we've been doing this. But additionally, um, you know, we are trying to extend it to Blackpool as well, and um, see how we can support them. In Madrasa, the other areas are welcome to come and spend some time with us and see how they can replicate this work additionally we are working on uh, the framework to make it a resource that can be you know we can share um the practices and everything that we've done and it can be eventually replicated in other areas as well brilliant thanks Maya. um uh fatima chandy i would also like to be included in any circulations um and communications so it might be again a connection with her um Oh, thank you. Uh, sharing the that recorded. That's great. Thanks, Adam. Um, would like to refer some of our panel referrals into the address where appropriate. Right. Okay. So yeah, I guess if you could pick up a conversation with Fatima beyond this, that would sounds like a great link. Um, and I think that's it. Unless anybody has any more questions. Sorry, we're six minutes over, but it's uh, lots of great comments and and questions in the chat so it's um you've done a great job there samaya and mark um and abai so thank you so much for for your input into that i think um you'll need to watch it a few times over to get every single bit of um 
of information from that uh, webinar. So it's been fantastic. Thank you very much. I have popped um, the link for the survey in the chat. For, so for those that are still with us, we'd really appreciate it if you could um, pass over your, your comments and your experiences on the webinar um, today. Um, and just thanks again. Thanks again for your input and thank you for, for everybody that's attended. So um, we are now seven minutes past one and welcome you into the afternoon. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.